Hello and welcome to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. And today we're going to change things up a bit. Um, I'm introducing a new little format where we are going to follow a listener as they undertake a fantastic and epic journey. Um, today we have one of my very avid audience members, Phil O'Keefe, who is undertaking a big challenge, one that's close to my heart, uh, as he is embarks on swimming to Rotnest. And I've just found out, not just as a solo in the channel swim, but he's also going to have a crack at the 25k ultra swim as well, shortly afterwards in the port to pub. So what we're going to do is we're going to chart Phil's journey, um, an everyday hero undertaking <laughs> fantastic challenge. And this week we are the week commencing 22nd of October. Phil has just registered for both events. And so what we're going to do is we're going to speak to Phil today and then we're going to come back and talk to him around about Christmas time and see how he's going. Then we're going to speak to him probably just before the solo and then we're going to speak to him shortly after that and then uh, and then probably talk to him again after the 25k. So we're going to chart the whole journey. So if anybody's out there interested in uh, what it takes to uh, undertake such a great event, um, you'll be able to see and hear it live. So Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank cool. you. Cool. So, Phil, uh, for the listeners out there, <clears throat> give us a brief intro. Uh, who's Phil? Um, and where's he? Wh- wh- who? You know, how old? Where have you come from? Yeah, da, yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, Phil's currently forty-three. <laughs> uh, he will be forty-four come swim time. Um, Phil's originally from New South Wales, Snowy Mountains, a little town called Berridale. Um, born and bred there. Lived there for seventeen years. Moved to Canberra. Lived there for a year or two, moved to Kyabra in Victoria right. for about six months or so, and then travelled across on the train to WA and been here 22 years so far, 23 years, yeah. Came Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So I think, I think it's 20 years before you classed a local, so I'm a local now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it certainly feels like that. Yeah. So um, you, uh, you're not just... You, you don't just do swimming. You've also got to you do other per- physical pursuits, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, a few years ago, uh, two or three years ago now, I got into bodybuilding. Um, my wife wanted to do a bucket list item, which was uh, to get up on stage. So I thought I'd um, do it with her and yeah. and jump up. And that was hugely helpful and beneficial in regards to learning so much about diet. And, right. And... Um, and the, it's a massive discipline, yeah. you know, to, for your eating and your exercise. And, and um, <clears throat> yeah, no, it was great. It was, hu- it was a huge eye-opener and beneficial for what I'm doing now too because yeah. like, for, for diet-wise and uh, what I need to do from now going in and through the swim and, and, and the like. So that was very educational. So And I still am very passionate about it, help out um, with all the comps. And I do intend on getting on stage again, but it's just not my focus now. So yeah. I've... Um, yeah, maybe in a couple of years. But, yeah. Superb, mm. superb. So um, how long have you been swimming for? Um, swimming my whole life. I was uh, always into swimming as a kid, um, always a, a sprinter mainly, always, yep. always, uh, you know, generally made it to regionals and state swimming, never made a final, but, you know, sort of made the heats and, and one one year I missed out by like a couple of hundredths of a second making the final. But um, always, always loved swimming, never... Uh, we were never in a position for mum to. I lost my father very young, so I was ne- mum was never in a position to pay for coaching or anything like that. Uh, as I got older, my sisters toyed with the idea of um, putting me into the AIS for for swimming and stuff, but um, that for some one reason or another that fell to the wayside. And then when I moved here um, uh, with my, in my, I was then currently um, with my first wife, and just. I started swimming again probably I think I've been swimming down at Tamba Squad for about 15 years mm. you know and Tamba um, Squad for the listeners out there is yeah. um a jovial old fellow who uh <laughs> pumps out free sessions at um Fremantle, Fremantle Leisure Centre hits it out Tuesday and Thursday mornings at half five yeah, yeah. but yeah sorry you um yeah. you've been yeah so I've just been uh swimming there and originally I suppose it was for for weight loss so I was I blew out and um through a period of my life, I was going through some hard times, making some hard decisions, and blew out to 110 kilos. And um, 
that was uh, like, right, I need to get back in the pool. That was what I always did and what I knew most. Um, yeah. I used to run a little bit, but preferred swimming. And uh, so, yeah, so just started that and that helped me in my weight loss journey and um, just continued it like daily, like five days a week. And um, then only probably a few years ago, uh, actually 2012 was the first time I did uh, a team rotness yep. crossing. That was when I first really started jumping in the ocean and doing some ocean swimming. That was um, a little daunting because it was – all my training's always been on my own um, except for the Tamba sessions when I finally joined those. But prior to that, I was swimming in other lanes on my own. and uh, But I was doing all my ocean swimming at Mullaloo on my own as well. And that was quite daunting going up and down the coast and hmm. shitting yourself every time you swim through some seaweed. And <laughs> <laughs> but um, since, you know, the last couple of years of um, – managed to get down to the polar bears and had a few swims with you, the likes of yourselves and and uh and it's been i just love it it's um just the atmosphere the people um yeah just you know chasing the black line is quite boring and i mean i do space out and i don't count my laps i rely on my watch so i just tune out it is a stress release for me swimming yes. as well so i'll just look up i'll check my watch at one point and i might have done four kilometers you know but and um but yeah, the ocean is just another level. You get to look at stuff and yeah, you know, marine life and and reefs and and uh, oh, you're a bit more buoyant and obviously it's a little bit colder and it's just other elements, you know. It's yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It can certainly get quite meditative, can't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, indeed. Yeah. So um, this week you parted with probably the best part of seven or eight hundred dollars. Oh uh, yeah, and some actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. Close to 900 and probably close to a grand by the time I bought a few hats and shirts for paddlers and right and stuff for the Rotto swim. I didn't buy much merch uh, for the port to pub. I mm. uh, just got myself a cap uh, for that one. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that was yeah, close to close to a grand. Yeah. And uh, but how did it feel when you clicked? Oh, I was procrastinating Submit. because the first one was the port to pub, and I was procrastinating on the couch and calling out to my wife, Sasha, and just going, will I, won't I, should I, shouldn't I? And and she's just gone, well, look, you know, if you, for whatever reason, you don't make the crossing for Rottnest, you're going to want to do the port to pub to, yeah. to do it. And um, providing, obviously, it's not an illness that I need recovery time for that might stop that. But, um, and then if you do do it and you enjoy it, you're going to go, well, I've got my fitness levels may as well just have a crack at the ultra, you know, it's an only another, it's a one morning set, it's a 5k set, so just tack that on top and and do that as well, so I was just like, yeah, right, so I had it all filled out and was, like I said, I was procrastinating when I finally had all the info filled out, credit card details and pressed pay, it, it all timed out, so I had to redo it all, so it was, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it was, yeah, it's a, I don't know, it's a mix of emotions really, Um Nervous, excited, anxious. Because it's um, real now. Yeah, it's definitely You're real. And like, scared as well and the fear of failure. There's just so much in there. Yeah, there's the, the butterflies. The This has been a long time bucket list since I moved to Perth, you know, 20, 23 mm. years ago. So um, I, I never even knew about it prior. I just seen it on the news one year and just went, oh, wow, that is so cool. I'd really love to do that, you know. Mm. And uh, So what is it about it that you – what's drawing you in? The distance and the – uh I don't know the the athletic ability, your fitness, the the mind. I think the mind games is is. But I've done a few things where you know your your mind. If you can't get over the mind games, you're never going to get through it. And no matter how physically fit and strong, and no matter what you you know, if you can't get past those mind games, um, yeah. it's um, it's it's going to be a tough gig. So you're looking forward to that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm actually. I want to get. No, I can get past because currently my longest swim is only ten k. Um, but I want to get past that. I intend to do Port Beach to Swanbourne and back. I think it's 16 odd K. Um, yes. I want to do that just to get past, just to go right out. Before the event. Yeah. I, I'll do that early Jan. And, um, my nephew and my son are paddling for me. Um, John is as well for, um, John Curtis for the, for Rotto. But then it'll be just my son and, um, my nephew for Port de Pub. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, do you have a training plan? Um, I'm not written out one as such, uh, in my head. I just, I want to do at least 25 Ks a week in the pool, which I have done now for four weeks straight. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so I've gone into my going into my fifth week now of of twenty five k's in a pool a week. Uh, I'm only doing about eighteen hundred, seventeen eighteen hundred in the ocean at the moment because it's pretty cold. But I need to get in there, so, yeah. and I've done it now. So it was the it was a daunting task at knowing it was sixteen degrees, and it was great just to get the first one out. And it's like, yeah, right, okay, mm. now. I mean, it's cold. It takes me a few hundred meters to get my breathing sorted, and um, but yeah, no, it's great when you get out. You feel so invigorated. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And how far is your um, horizon at the moment in terms of are you thinking about race and finish lines or? I guess when I actually am swimming, you go through the whole race. I pretty much go through while I'm swimming, and uh, a lot of it's some of it's the start, but a lot of it's the finish. That final seven hundred, like the, just the rush, the 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 power home, you know, um, that excites me. Um, I remember from the the te- the first team swim we did that was all i was focused on was the the finish and um and we all jumped in to swim together to the into into shore and a a couple of the um people in our team um were not as fit i suppose and we we i wasn't able to finish it the way i wanted to and in the end we were just duck diving pulling seaweed and doing stuff but it was still great it was awesome yeah 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 superb superb Mm. so um yeah so you are thinking about the finish. Yep. Um, I have this, my family there, my wife, my kids. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a lot there. of swimming to be done yet. Yeah. There's I mean, still a lot of swimming to be done. I want to four event, months away. I want to do each weekend. I'd like to at least pump out six to ten k's every weekend in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, the qualify swims coming up in a month. I'm doing the Champion Lakes one. Yep. So um, that's well, I think it's four hours cut off for um, that because it's four ten mm. in the ocean, four hours in a in the lake sort of uh, mm. scenario. It's always interesting going to qualify for an open water swim in by lake. swimming around a lake. Oh, no. It's um, strange. Some 15 kilometres away from the coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I'm, I'm doing that only, I suppose, you know, you, you might get a bit of chuff if it's windy, but that's about it. You've got no, you don't have to worry about currents and stingers and the like. So you can, yeah. you can bust out the uh, qualify swim without too many stresses and worries, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have, do have sort of uh, in when I did my duo, uh, which was the following year, twenty thirteen. I ended up um, I get a pulmonary edema, so I had a bleeding bleeding of the lungs, and I had no idea what it was, and I was coughing up blood from just before the ten k mark, and um, that took um, took a bit out. Like by the time we got to seventeen k's, I was just fully drained, had no energy, could hardly. Yeah. I hardly throw an arm over and um, I couldn't do the last swim into the beach and then spent about four hours in a nursing post on oxygen after that. That is a worry, like, but that was yeah. a little bit choppy that year and and apparently it's inhaling sea mist and gets onto your lungs and then it bursts the capillaries and they bleed and, yes. and then you end up with your oxygen levels and your blood drop, hence fatigue and, and stuff like that. But, you know, now if that – for our, if that does happen, at least I've experienced it and I know what it is and I'm not going to try and push through unless it happens late, like at 17Ks yeah. and I'll finish, you know. Um, but uh, if that happens early, it'll be like, yeah, I'm not going. Because, yeah, it was um, it was quite daunting. That. I can imagine. And the wife's on the boat Googling and, and I'm just <laughs> coughing up blood and then continually, instead of breathing out while swimming, it was a cough. And it was, uh, yeah, that is like that's always in the back of my mind yep. about the up and coming swims, but uh, I haven't experienced it since. But I haven't done any, quite the same yeah, thing. quite the same thing in in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Mm. Cool. Yes. Well, I think we've uh, set the scene nicely there. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we'll check in again. Let's say uh, around about Christmas time. Hopefully, we'll have been qualified. Yep. And um, we'll see how it's heading forward. Yeah. Yeah. Phil. Sure, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. No worries. Best of luck. Cheers. Hello and welcome back to WA Real. Today we're going to continue our journey with Phil, who is on his way to swimming his first solo swim to Rottnest. If you remember previously, we checked in with Phil at the start of his journey when he'd just uh, slapped down a large amount of money (laughs) and entered um, both the Channel Swim uh, Solo and the Port to Pub 25K. So 
We're now in the first week of January and a number of things will have happened. So I thought we'd check in and, and see how he's going. Phil, welcome back. Thank you. Glad so, you back. so um, what have you been up to apart from a lot of swimming? <laughs> uh, yeah, not much other than a lot of swimming. No, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I've been chugging along nicely and obviously we've had Christmas and, and everything in between all that. Um, but yeah, obviously the, 10k qualifiers happen hmm. since uh, we last spoke. So um, for, for people who listen to this for the first time, in order to stand on the start line and even start the Rottnest Channel Swim, um, you have to have done a 10k qualifier to demonstrate that you are physically capable of at least giving it a good crack. Yeah. yeah. You have to do that. So when did you do that? How did it go? I did that in November, towards the end of November. Um, the first one available to do was uh, the Champion Lakes one, and I just wanted to get it done and out of the way. Yeah. Over my whole, I suppose, the journey, this is quite a long journey dating back to like 2012 when I did my first team, but and they – the idea was to always do my solo. And the most daunting part for me is not the actual swim, but it was the, the qualifier. Yeah. Like, cause it wasn't like, am I going to be able to do 10 K, you know, like nonstop in and, the time. Yeah. In that time frame, And, um, I was definitely more stressed about that. Um, than I am about, than I ever have been about doing the actual channel swim. Well, the channel swim you got all day. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. And, um, but, uh, you know, as, as it turned out, I, was, I did some good training prior to – I started my training um, way back in, jeez, early, even before October, you know, really. Um, so, yeah, I was in good stead for it, but still, again, very nervous. And um, But then we went out to Champion Lakes uh, that day, and Champion Lakes, is, you've got to do it 15 minutes quicker because it's a uh, fresh water. It's not open water. It's not in the ocean. Um it was quite windy, so the, the longest leg, it was a big lap, um, two and a half K laps, and the, the longest leg, I had the, we had the headwind. Um, so it was a little bit choppy, but not. I've, yeah. There's been a lot worse in the ocean and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I did. Um, I, did we only, I only had two drinks breaks. Uh, I had my wife on the little jetty, Sasha. She was um, handing me gel shots and drinks and stuff like that. Um, only had the two. And on the last lap, I felt really good, so I put a put put the pedal down a little bit in um, to thought. Well, let's see what sort of see if I can get a decent time. Ended up doing two hours forty five. So and I was super happy. With yeah, that. like beyond expectations that was, and um, that was a massive confidence boost for me. Yeah. I pulled up brilliantly. I um I went and got a massage my shoulders and stuff. They were a little bit fatigued, I suppose. You know, um, but yeah, that was. I pulled up, yeah, very well. And I was, mm. Again, a little bit more confidence out of that as well. And um, so then after that, I was able to relax a little bit and uh, just concentrate on on my swimming. I've never had a really a written down set program when I'd go to my training. I I go to the pool and I think I might do. Well, I know the distance I'm going to do, but I always never end up doing what I have preempted in my head, I'm always like, oh, I'll just keep going or I'll, no, I'll break it up, you know. And um, But at the end of the time, we're still doing the same distance. But I've implemented um, a lot more ocean swimming now. Um, How are you finding that? Loving it. Loving it. What is it about the ocean swimming you enjoy? I just – I've had a couple of rough swims in the rough water and, to, to be honest, they've been my most favourite. Why is that? I just – I've changed my swimming style. I don't focus on times. I'm just in the ocean on my own going with the water and the waves. And so you might, like I breathe every third stroke bilaterally, but in those conditions, you just got to change and adapt. And I just ended up like just in a really happy place and mm. confidence boosted and got out pumped, you know, after. Yeah. And again, a little bit extra confidence too because – Couple of the, well, definitely one of those swims. If that had been the the morning of the Rottnest swim, and it would have been cancelled. You know, it yeah. was that rough. But and I just loved it, and I thought, oh, that's awesome. If I can do it now in that, and you know, whatever, let's bring it on. You yeah, know? Um, the stingers were hectic I mean, <laughs> this year. Like the storm three weeks ago took them away, which was lovely. But prior to that. Um, very hectic, the stingers, uh, full. I was only at the time wearing long pants. 
for my ocean swims and just coming out full welts and neck. One of them restricted my breathing afterwards and big one on my eyebrows and lips. And But um, I swam through it. That was, as you know, between the third and the fifth hut, there was a couple of plumes and I of them and – I don't know whether whether you call it a plume or a pod or whatever those are stingers, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, I went through it, and yeah, <laughs> I went through them, and that was just hectic. But I pushed through it, like I didn't get out, and turned around, come back, went back, went a little bit deeper, didn't cop so many. So was, there's ways and means, I suppose. I've been told if you stick closer to the shore on the way up, you get less. And but I've, some days I've done that and I've copped heaps. So I think it's just neither here nor there. But um, yeah, so the stingers, they've gone. Copped a few this morning, but nothing really, mm. you know, maybe five. And it talks was, about finding a happy place in the ocean. Yeah. Expand on that. What do you mean? Um, just tuning out and looking, right? On those rough days, you don't get much to look at. It's all churned up and stuff. It's just focusing, I suppose, on the conditions and getting in the role with, with mm. the waves. Um, the ocean is a far better place to swim than chasing a black line. I find I focus a lot on technique when I'm in the pool, like, oh, my arm, it's getting lazy. I'm pulling it across my body, do that. Oh, you kick, carry. Mm. In the ocean, I don't think about that. I just swim. And mm. it's really nice, you know. Oh, the, the, the swims I do in the ocean, you know the distances they are when you're finished, but in the pool, like, oh, yeah, you've got to check how far I've done. You, you know, you want to do 4Ks, you've got to do X. Yeah, you've got to keep a count and – these days with watches and stuff like that, that makes it a bit easier. But uh, I just love tuning out and not tuning out like <laughs> it's not that I drift off and sometimes I do drift off and just think about random shit in my life, you know, like what's going on at the time or, you know, Christmas is coming up, what are we doing for this? So I do do that, but I don't know. It's just you're when there is good conditions and it's really clear, you've got, um, you've got obviously the fish. On Thursday this week, I swam between the footbridge and the first hut. A stingray, the a stingray come with me for nearly that whole journey, and he was just alongside me, and it was just awesome. And he come in and went under me, and you can't help but think, "Oh my God, Barb to the heart, Steve Irwin stuff." <laughs> <laughs> but then he drifted back out, and you know. And yeah. and when the waves come in, the swell comes in. You go, you cop shadows, but you just get used to it, and it's, you roll with it. And I'm not petrified of any sharks and and that at the moment. I mean, if they're, I've probably swum for all I know, right next to a couple. You yeah. know, I'm down there at five thirty. They're not doing the helicopter drive bys then, fly yeah. bys, should I say? But um, you start to delay a lot of fear around. Yeah, that, yeah, right? definitely. And even that goes with the stingers too. Like I used to freak out. <laughs> adrenaline, oh, my God, and extra kick and pull myself up out of the water when I'd cop a big one. And now it's just, oh, yeah. And a couple of times I've had to stop because it's been stuck in my stubble <laughs> across my lips and like get, get away, you know. But um, even then I just continue to swim on normally and pff, try and blow them off if they do get stuck there. And yeah. I'm wearing the full suit now, um, which is kind of good because – when my nipples are on, when it's cold, I've had a few get caught on my nipples, <laughs> <laughs> the stingers, and uh, that's not nice. But um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really there is don't get me wrong, there is days where it's a chore, um, mm. and I think, oh, where am I? Oh, am I going to go to the ocean or I'm going to go to the pool? No, just go to the ocean, and and it's those days that I'll have an awesome swim and get yeah. out, and go, oh, great, you know. It's mm. I suppose you could sort of put it to. I don't know if you're playing a lot of golf and you, you have a shit round of golf and it's like, but then you have that one great round and it's like, yes, you know, I'm yeah. back at this again, you know. So it's getting to the point now, like this week, it's been a big week. It's my biggest week so far, 42 Ks of training. And I'm feeling good. Like, and I don't think I'll do much more than that going forward, uh, kilometer base wise, but I might do a couple of bigger swims yeah. and um, to make up the kilometers. But, uh, yeah, it's it's not a chore, and I'm not thinking hurry up and get be done with yet. You yeah. Know? So, which is good because I don't want it to get that way because I've always loved my swimming, and I don't want to come in at the back end of these two swims and go. Oh, I'm not going to swim for a year. You know, I'm so yeah. over swimming. But yes. uh, so I'm not anywhere near there. So I'm happy with that. How's the uh, support at home for this? Support at home is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
hundred percent. I haven't. It hasn't really. Other than my Saturday night mornings, chuffing off at getting up at four o'clock and waking up the wife and making a few noises around the house, making coffees and feeding the dogs and stuff like that. Um, it's yeah. On the way home in the afternoons, I pop in. I'm doing four or five k's in the morning at Fremantle, and then I'm doing two more k's at Joondalup on the way home. I still get home before my wife, so it's not like I'm eating into our personal time. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. The, mm. the less it affects our our home life, the better. But she's fully supportive. She knows I've got these goals, mm. and I've had this goal for quite some time, and um, mm. it backs me 100. Yeah. percent So as we um, look forwards now, how many weeks have we got to the race? Oh. I don't know. That's a good I'd, answer. Yeah. It's probably about seven or eight weeks now. Is it? Yeah. Um, I did yeah. I did have a countdown going and I started a group chat on Messenger uh, a week or so ago just to get the team all together. And I think at that point it was a 57-day countdown because I looked it up to put in the chat. Yeah. But prior to that, I haven't been oh, X amount of weeks out. or It goes for all of a sudden not. It, it goes from, oh, it's next year to, yeah. oh, it's next month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's January now. It's yeah. next month. You know, so yeah, shit's getting real. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. So as we look forward over the next eight weeks, what are the things you're looking forward to? What are the things you've got to work on? Uh, things I'm looking forward to is this month, a, a, a four day break. We're probably with no swimming, maybe a little bit, if any. We're going, uh, my wife and I are going on a cruise to Hamilton Island. Um, that's going to be a good rest and recovery. That's on the 19th, so that's really close. So it's not too far off. So I want to, prior to that, I probably, my mentality is to put in a little bit extra, maybe not kilometer wise. I don't think, not more than what I've done this week. So if anything, do the same for the next mm-hmm. few weeks before we go. And then, uh, have a break. I actually had a break a little while ago. Uh, my son went to Bali for levers and and it was around my wife's birthday as well. And um, it was sort of the volcano went off and I was like, oh, God, maybe we should go over there. You know, he's over there on his own with his girlfriend and um, you know, he's only 17 and mm. I thought, oh, we'll go over if they get stuck. We'll help them out. We'll get a villa, stay longer, whatever, you know, so it'll take a little bit of stress off him. It coincided with my wife's birthday, so that was her birthday present. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we went over there and I did zero swimming for five days and that was so beneficial. It messed with my head a little bit because I wasn't swimming. Yes. But beneficial for my fatigue. Like I come back and I was like, oh, wow, I'm feeling super good. Good to go. So ha- having done that, knowing I'm coming into this cruise with a four-day break as well, I know I'm just going to come back, you know, stronger and better yeah. for it, you know, with maybe a few less niggles in the shoulder, you know. So, Superb. Yeah. And then, yeah, after after that, that's um, Australia Day. We're still off, actually, for another week when we get back. But I'll be back into my swimming that week. Um, and, yeah, and then it's really – then it's, you know, your, your 24-day countdown really after that break. Indeed. So, yeah. At this point in the journey, uh, what's some of the biggest things you're learning about? Phil, through going through this process? About Phil, um, probably that I'm a little bit more mentally, I mean, I know I've sort of always been pretty mentally strong, but it's, I suppose, cementing things or just like, oh, yeah, you can do this. You know, it's, there's always, I think it's human nature to always carry an element of doubt, you know, about yourself or, especially when you're talking swimming for six, seven hours straight, you know, mm. non-stop. 20 k 20 kilometres. Yeah, it's, um, it's no mean, you know, it's no. More people have been to Everest. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Mm. That's a, a crazy statistic. And, um, yeah, it's, and I think like the, the whole solo thing, there's nothing solo about it. You can't do it without your crew, you know. Mm. You can't do it without your paddler or paddlers and your boat and your skipper and, and my wife with the food and, and all the rest of that, you know, there's, there's nothing solo about this, you know. So it's, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm getting pretty pumped now. So, cool. Yeah, but Phil, learning about Phil, he's, I've, yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm definitely fitter, feeling stronger, um, but mentally, probably the mentally mental side of things, I'm happy with where I am, you know, with that and yeah. where it's, putting me 
in that. I think my only my only concern about the whole swim is um, hypothermia because um, I do get cold. But not only when I get out, like even today, I'm always getting shit in the change room because I'm shaking, you know. <laughs> and even when I'm having a cup of tea, it's just like, oh, he's Phil again, he's shaking, you know. But it, that is getting better. Yeah. I'm not shaking for as long. But, again, it's only when I get out. Like today I really enjoyed it and there were some really nice warm patches which only amplified the cold patches. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's – I felt – I didn't feel cold like, oh, my God, I need to get out. And so I was like, oh, well, I'll come back to Port Beach and I said, oh, I'm feeling good. I'll just do another groin and back, you know, because I didn't feel cold and I felt good and within myself. So mm. so just tack that on at the end. And, um, yeah, it's – I'm happy with where it is. Good stuff. Mm. Well, thank you for checking in again. No worries. Thank we'll, you. Um, we'll speak again probably week before. Week before. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks for the journey. Yes. Cheers. Hello and welcome back to WA Real. Here we are back again for part three with Phil on his uh, journey to Rottnest Solo. Um, Welcome back, Phil. Thank you. Now, Phil, we were supposed to meet a week before your swim. Yes. And and catch in and, and check in there. But uh, we didn't quite do that. What, what was that, Phil? <laughs> uh, yeah, I ended up uh, with some issues and ended up in hospital and, and surgery. And and, 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 what, and what was that about? <laughs> that was a, a perianal abscess. Yeah, lovely. Yes. Right yeah. in the perineum. Yeah, 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 yeah that's <laughs> right. Um, which, I, well, from what I gather, started from or initiated from me doing my back and all the pain meds from that mm. and so the binding us, up. Take us through what happened before from from the last time we um, checked in, which was just after your 10K swim. Yeah. Uh, okay, I suppose the next big event, I suppose, was getting the email. Um, actually, no, no, we went away. I went away on holidays uh, yeah. with, with my wife on a cruise um, from Brisbane to Fortnite to Hamilton Island. Um just shy of 24 hours on the ship, um, I went to get up off the the settee in our cabin and um, I felt a little twinge in my back. And anyway, we walked off and I think we were going to get some bingo cards and dabbers, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And, um, <laughs> and uh, when I came back, sat back down, and um, when I get up, went to get up the next time, my back fully locked up on me and it – a few, quite a going back a few years ago now, twice I've had a bulge disc, um, you know, about 15 years ago when I was uh, unhealthy and overweight. Um, and it felt exactly the same as that. And I thought I'd had a bulge disc and um, excruciating pain, pretty much paralysed, couldn't feel really my legs, couldn't move them. Um, they ended up getting the medics from the ship in. Um, they couldn't. They couldn't get the, the bed, the stretcher bed, into the cabins. Like, go figure. You yeah. Know, you've got stretcher beds to carry people around, but you can't get them into the cabins. Anyway, so they had six guys come in and pick me up out of bed and put me in a wheelchair, and they took me down to the hospital. And anyway, they gave me some pretty good drugs and it was, uh, it's some Valium, I think, actually, and I was just yeah. like, Ugh, and some painkillers. Anyway, they wanted to move me to Hamilton Island. I said no because I'll be stuck on Hamilton. Um, anyway, we... Long story short, I spent the rest of the holiday staring at the roof tiles in our cabin. Uh, they made me comfortable in there rather than down at the hospital and in the on-ship hospital. Uh, then we come home and had scans and stuff, and it wasn't a bulge disc, thankfully. It was just massive mus- muscle spasms. Yeah. Um, I can probably only put that down to my training, I'd say. I was, so you, it was going well before that? Training was like I was four or five weeks on the trot. I was uh, – very close to 40 Ks, if not over 40 Ks each week of swimming. Maybe that was too much in looking back. I don't know. Um, yeah. But And then all of a sudden doing it pretty much six days a week swimming to two or three days with none mm. um, by the time we flew over and whatnot and maybe, yeah, I don't know, just not exercising, not moving around, whether that triggered it. Who knows? It could have been diet-related too. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so did my back um, and the painkillers through that, obviously 
they bound me up. I was, I was told that they wouldn't, um, but they did. And I think that's what sort of maybe brought on the perianal uh, abscess, um, which was absolutely excruciating. I've never been in so much pain in my life. I can um, only <laughs> some, And I've never heard of it before, but apparently it's very common. And But the – like it went well, – yeah – the the rapid gr- progression of it was ridiculous. Like it was an overnight thing, and and then they put me on antibiotics on the Friday. Come the Sunday night, um, I was I felt like I was about to implode, like from the inside out, and it was excruciating. And the mind games that I went through then was absolutely ridiculous. Like yeah. I've <laughs> never really had self harm thoughts before, but um, I did. I'd never do. I would never follow through with it, but I just wanted it to stop. And, you know, I, I said to my wife, I, I think if, if we had a gun now, I'd be, I'd be, yeah. think, I'd be thinking about just finishing it, you know, because oh, I was just right. in that much. But, but I never would, yeah. you know. And, but it was just the, the, the mental stuff of that. So, yeah, it was like, no, we need to go to hospital. And um, this was, that was a week out from the swim. That was the Sunday. Yeah. So, the, so let me get this right. The, the bulge disc was how far before the swim? That was like four, four weeks before the swim. And then I actually had a reoccurrence two weeks later as yeah. well. So, But you still did a little bit of swimming. I was actually was still doing eight Ks a day. It was the only time when I came back. Yeah. was the only time I was pain free with my back was while swimming. swimming. There yeah. you go. And, it's, and for the first half an hour out of the pool, or yeah. actually at pool, I wasn't doing any ocean then, um, I, I had full range of movement yeah. and could – do whatever, put my shoes and socks on, no worries, move around. But then half an hour later, it'll all creep back in, the, yeah. the, the pain. Um, and I had a reoccurrence of that two weeks out. Um, and and then, it, so you're doing this training, but you're still feeling all right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the abscess turns yeah. up. And then all of a sudden the, the abscess turns up and throws another spin on it. And I called it that that was it. I'm not doing – I can't do the swim. Like, I was in hospital. But this is when I was in all that pain. Yeah, that was, was gone. That, that was, was six days before. Yeah. And before. four and a half days, so on the Monday lunchtime, I was wheeled into surgery. So four and a half days before the swim. And I called it then, said, oh, there's no way I can't do the swim, you know. Yeah. I had no idea what, what was, how I was going to be after surgery as well. I had no idea that I was going to be left with an open wound yeah. and, and that had to heal from the inside out. And um, But when I woke up on the Tuesday morning, I was such a new man. Like, yeah. I was like, just the mm, biggest relief. Yeah. And I was just like, well, maybe I can do this. So I started asking questions to the nurses and the doctors, and they all said, no, you can't swim. You, you can't swim in the ocean. You can't swim, definitely can't swim in a pool. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't be doing, you can't do the rottenest channel swim. And I'm like, well, why? And I said, well, you, it, it, the ocean's not clean. It's bacteria and blah, 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 blah. It is cleaner than the pools. Yeah, in in that respect, but um, I'm like, well, what if I get, what if I can cover it and we can seal it and we can do it then? Well, now, how big was it again? Uh, well, it was the cut was two centimeters wide, but it went in twelve. The, the cavity is twelve centimeters within. Like, yeah. not not in it was on not in my anus, but next to it, up yeah, there, alongside it, what have you, yeah. Um, so and they pack they have had to pack that with gauze, um, and that was changed daily. We're still trying coming around doing that and whatnot. And I just said to him, look, uh, eventually said, no, I'm going to do this. So what? What do I need to do to mitigate the risks? Yeah. And um, they just they pretty much said, well, you're better off just taking the packing out, cleaning it, flushing it. And I said, well, I can wear two pairs of swimmers. I can wear my training swimmers underneath my pants. Yeah. And um, at this point in time, I was still set on wearing that suit that I yeah. bought. I put, I put that on in the house and wore it around for two hours and I went, I'm not wearing that suit. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to the pants idea. And um, so the, the idea of the two pairs, like my training togs and the pants, was to keep out any sediments, like ocean stuff, whatever. We knew it was going to get wet and they'd said, regardless of whether you seal it, it, water's going to get in, you know. Mm. And um, my paddler, uh, my nephew, Patrick, is a fourth-year med student. And um, so I spoke about that and we teed up a plan the morning of the swim. He was going to remove the gauze, flush, clean it. I was going to go and do the swim. Uh, as soon as we got to Rottnest, 
it was imperative that I got it dry instantly as soon as I got out of the water, which is a shame. I wanted to have a massage, but anyway. <laughs> but so we went out um, and I ch- obviously checked my swimmers. There was no sediment and cleaned it and it was all good. And we didn't didn't pack it for those few days because I was over there um, and he went home. And so you decided to do the swim? Decided to do the swim. Um, yeah, it was – and there so, was mind games, and I didn't realise how bad it was until the Friday before the swim, the yeah. day before the swim. I went and seen my GP, and he stuck a cotton bud up the cavity and showed me how far, how deep it was. And and he grabbed my phone. And he said, "Here, I'll take a photo." And it's disgusting. <laughs> took a photo, and that took the wind out of my sails. Yeah. I went, "Wow, this is worse than I thought it was." Um, it's not really a huge amount of pain. I struggled to sit. I had to go and buy one of those donuts <laughs> to sit on. Um, but, uh, yeah, the morning, the day of the swim, I, I could sit without using a donut and stuff. But um, it wasn't really too much pain as yeah. such. And, yeah, it was, yeah, the – I don't know. It was. It took the wind out of my sails, and I went well. And I spoke to my wife, Sash, and I said, "Oh, look, this is that that Friday. I had some real like, should I do, should I shouldn't I? Yeah. Am I doing the right thing? My whole mentality was, I'm not going to throw away six months of training. You know, you set you get in the zone, don't you? Yeah. Where it's um, all reason and rationale goes out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, like, like and advi- like people are giving you advice. Yeah. No, I'm not listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And you know. Uh, I'd, I'd logged all – well, not logged. I bought a watch when I started my swimming to track all my swimming. I'd done 622 Ks before the swim yeah. training in six months. And I remember six months before the swim, I made a decision to have foot surgery on the on the back of that I'll have 90% recovery in that first six months. My yeah. biggest concern then was whether I'd be able to walk or run up the ramp yeah. at the end. You know, that was my main concern. Yeah. You know? Um and yeah, little, little did I know, yeah, you know, about everything else that was gonna. So, did you sleep well on the Friday night? Uh, it took me. I went to bed early. Um, well, not early, before my wife, which is unusual. We always go to bed together, but um, we had everyone stayed with us that night, so I think she felt obliged to stay up mm. with them. And I, I think I fell asleep pretty quick, but then when she came in, I woke up and I struggled to get back to sleep. Mm. Um, but I, my alarm went off at four. We got up at four. Yeah, that too. Sorry, two o'clock because um, yeah. we had we live up South Geraldton Way, Clarkson. So um, yeah. and we had to. Everyone was at our place, and we dropped them at the boat ramp, and then I carried on. Yeah, down and um, yeah. I so I um before and then after I suppose I did my back and I got the email about my race number and stuff. I found out that I'd made the champions of the Channel Wave. Yeah, um, which. I was so stoked about it. I want like that. I wanted, I wanted, honoured really to be able to stand. I had no, I, realistically, I was never going to play, so I was never going to win it. I was yeah. just, it was just to be on the beach with those dudes at the start line and to give yourself that 10, 15 minute head start before yeah. the elements kick in. I thought it was huge, but and I thought that's how I was going to look at it if I got it. And then I got it, and I started thinking, well, this is. It's kind of is there an expectation on me now to do a certain time? You know, like within. If we'd be it myself or the swimming community, you yeah. know, like as, are people going to – and, you know, and then I carried that, I suppose, to the swim. Yeah. Um, tossing and turning whether, you know, and, not, and I was not focused. I was originally when I signed up to do all this thing focused on a little bit of times and then I went away from that went, you know what, I'm not focused on times. I just yeah. want to get there. But then I was back to focusing on times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, which wasn't good and – which sort of I don't know when I when I got there. I mean that that day when I got there and, and I got out and when I was waiting to pick up my pack and and my medal, the the laptop was there and I punched in my race number and bang came up my time and um, it was six hours thirty four and I was just deflated. Deflated. Like, I, yeah, I know. It's, how stupid is that? You know, I know. like I've. Um, I was, I'll be totally honest with you and it is ridiculous and it sounds ridiculous, but that's how I felt. I, f- I, f- I felt disappointed, you know, and, um, I sort of went away and it is sort of, and I, and I got my medal and stuff. And anyway, we did all those sort of things. It wasn't until the Monday after we stayed there on Rottnest for a few nights and, um, 
the Monday I got up uh, pretty early, six five thirty six o'clock, and um, I put on my Rottnest solo shirt and my medal, put it around my neck, yeah. and um, I was, I was getting emotional thinking about it now, and I just got really emotional, and I just went, wow, like all those years of me driving over the when I was driving the coast road to work, going over the thing coming into Scarborough and seeing Rottnest, going, I'm going to swim to there one day. And yeah. and it sort of kicked in. I went, holy shit, I've done it. I swam to Rottnest. It's very surreal. And it's like 20 kilometres nonstop, six and a half hours in the water, you swam yeah. and you made it. Big open gash. And, and then my journey, you factor in all those things as well prior, like the lead up. And I think the the um, the mental demons that I faced on that Sunday night held me in good stead for the swim because I knew I was no matter how I felt through that swim or what was going through my head, I knew that it wasn't going to be as bad as that. Yeah. And and I faced no mental demons through my swim. Yeah. And I think I remember it like twelve. or What do you remember of the swim? The, the, the start. start. The start was awesome. The start um, is awesome. You stand there in the pan. There's thousands of people yeah. all around. There's all the noise, and you're standing there and you're looking out. And you go right. This is me. I've done the training. Off I'm going. Yeah. You know. Um, awesome. You had six hundred and something kilometers in your chest. I, yeah. I remember I had. I tracked mine. I had mm. five hundred and twenty-five kilometers in my chest. It's like right. This is on. I'm mm. going. Yeah. But it's mega. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, I was a bit antsy to go and pick up my timing chip and stuff like that. They said it opened at 5.45 and it didn't open until 6, I think, and I was just like, oh, shit, my plans, you know, and we, what I had in my head where I was going to get dressed and and all that sort of stuff because I didn't wear my pants and that down there. And um, But, yeah, I mean, then I was cold when I stripped down and standing there and putting on some wool fat and stuff. I got a bit cold and and I put anti-fog in my goggles and then we got called through the through the, the arch and um, I was like, I've got to get down to the water and rinse this out. You know? mm. And so I went down there and the water was so warm. Mm. And I was on the northern side. And everyone was on the southern side. There was probably five, six of us on the northern side. And I was just chatting to a guy there and he was like, how warm is the water? I'm like, wow, it's like a bath. You know, it was so warm. And, and then uh, – I was quite happy that Colin Barnett started it because he's done it for so many years and it's his last year like, mm. on the Hooter because I was unsure who was going to be doing that because he obviously um, resigned or pulled out from being uh, the member of Cottesloe. But, um, yeah, it was it was pretty surreal standing there. Um, and then when it was all go, I was like jumped in, dived in, my goggles started leaking straight up. I'm like, <laughs> I've never, at, never in the ocean swimming ever made my goggles leak. So I had to stop and just – emptied it, started swimming. A little bit crept in and I just went, you know what, I'm just going to keep going. And I kept going and then as the sun rose, it was so beautiful. I was swimming, turning and looking behind me, just watching the sunrise. Um, picked up, well, John picked up me pretty quick. Um, and it wasn't, and I didn't realise this at the time, I had no idea, but we were like, let's see, 15, 20 metres from the Lewin and I had not seen our boat. And yeah. I was stressing. And so you put your partner up, now you're looking for your support boat. Yeah, support boat. And um, But apparently they'd picked each other up, but he just couldn't get in and he was just hovering yeah. out there, you know. And and then John said to me, I've got the boat. And I remember like just yelling out, thank fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and apparently my wife and that could hear, us, hear yeah. me say that. And um, It's and, quite a relief because it's, it's, yeah. you found your partner, you found your boat. You can go past the loon now and so on. That's when the race you got, started. You got nothing else well, to worry about. That's when the swim started. Yeah. It wasn't a race. It wasn't racing anyone, you know, but that's when the swim started, when mm. when we caught, caught them. And I carried on for quite a while. I think I did like 45 plus before my first food break. And um, that was pretty cool. Uh, well, it was cool to see everyone and say good day. Um, but then like, I, I went to grab uh, my gel shot and – my drink and the surge pulled John away from me. And so I went to do some breaststroke to catch him and my hamstring went cramped and a stupid, I should have known like mm. breaststroke brings that on for me. Yeah. Anyway, so I had to lay on my back and 
stretch that out and all I could think of was like, oh, no, if that fully locks on, it's game over because I've had it twice in my life when I was a bit younger, but I could not straighten my own leg out. Yeah. I had to get someone to grab it. And I thought, if I have to do that, that's, that's yeah. it. All over, over. So that was challenging kicking because every time I bent my knee to kick, so I just had to stiff leg it. Didn't do much. And then it was fine for the next few feet stops. And then on the third one, it got me worse. And, um, and it was, I just lay on my back and stretched it out and had a quick drink and went, I need to keep going. Mm. I need to keep going. And, and then it didn't really bother me for a little while. Mm. Till about 16 kilometers. How'd you find the conditions? Very lumpy and surgy. Yeah. Um, like catch a wave, dragged back. And my mm. paddlers, my God, they were, uh, fell out left, right, and center. I had three paddlers, um, John, Patrick, and Noah, my son. And um, it, it was hard for them. I, I feel really sorry for them. It was a tough gig. Like, mm. They were back paddling to try and feed and... I think they spent more time strong easy ladies pa- paddling east backwards east than they did forward, you know, and uh, and it was really lumpy. And okay, the records were broken and stuff like that, and they said it was perfect conditions. And you hear all those reports, and I was just like, no, nah, you weren't in there. That was shit. Like, mm. It was lumpy and it was surgy, and feeding was a bitch because you kept getting there's, separated and have. There to was a lot of swim. help by the elements, but you had to pay for that yeah. help. From yeah. the elements. I couldn't get into my my rhythm, my all day pace rhythm of yeah. swimming. Um, you, you know, which is my breathe every third stroke, bilateral breathing. I couldn't do that. I just had to adapt and mm. end up swallowing a bit of water and stuff. A couple of times, it uh, crossed my mind about uh, how have I not got a pulmonary edema yet? The amount of water I've swallowed, <laughs> you know, because I had I got one in my duo, a pulmonary yeah, edema, right. so I knew about that, but I knew I didn't have one because I wasn't coughing and, yeah. and, and stuff. So yeah, it was in, from, for when they started falling off the kayak, uh, I thought I was, I was just following two boats because I wasn't stopping and I just kept going. And I thought I had no support boat and no paddler for what it was about 25 minutes and I just couldn't see it. And I just was looking at the two boats in front of me and I was just following that. And then I was starting to think, Jesus, it's coming up to a food break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need, because I was stopping every half hour. And anyway, then they turned up with the kayak held against the support boat coming up alongside me. And, and then they stuffed around to get back in it. And little to my knowledge later on, I find out that uh, Patrick fell out and and they threw out the Oki line with a float with a, a boy for him to grab to, to rescue him. And he swum. He actually fed me first treading water. And then I kept going because he couldn't get on. Yeah. The, couldn't get back on the kayak once he was in the water. And then he tried to swim and catch the boat, and he couldn't catch it. And he was exhausted and just stopped. And they kept going and left him. And he that another boat rescued, rescued him. <laughs> <laughs> and then John, John got in with some fins and tried to catch him. And it took John twenty five minutes to get back to the boat. He got cold, so he was on the boat getting dry and warm. Ended up sleeping for a few hours. And at one point I was swimming along and I looked over and all I could see was the skipper and, uh, and his offsider, Jack. And uh, I couldn't see anyone else. I'm like, there's supposed to be five people on that boat. Where are they all? And, well, four and one paddling. My son was paddling. I'm like, where is everyone? Maybe John got in another boat or something, yeah. you know. And my, and my ended up, my wife was seasick and just heaving and in the corner and just rocking. And, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it was um, – like, yeah, I didn't have any demons and it was it just – I had just to swim to the conditions and I just thought to myself, there's no way you're not going to make it. Yeah. Like, after everything you've been through mentally um, and I suppose physically. And my back, surprisingly, that period from surgery, flat on my back in bed rest, not doing anything, my back felt good the morning of the swim. Yeah. Not – which I thought in my mind, because you're not moving it, you should have gone backwards. And yes. my my logic thinking tells me that it, should, it would have been detrimental not not moving and yeah and stuff. But it was actually ended up being okay. So I was pretty happy about that. Yeah. So you enjoyed the swim. I enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed the swim, and then the experience. And it was. What was it like going to the beach and seeing the seeing the sea grass there? And it's like, oh, this is done now. Yeah, it was the boat peels off, and then yeah, the, the paddler boat, peels off. The boat off. peeled off at the eighteen k mark at Philip Rock, and I was left with Noah, my son, because I wanted him to paddle me in. Yeah, 
And um, it was pretty surreal. And he was supposed to branch off to the south side. And they said, all the paddlers got to go to the south side. But anyway, the um, the guys, the lifesavers there on the thing peeled him off to the left, which was fine because that's, we that's where the boat was going. And, um, yeah, no, it was good. I sort of stopped and told him I loved him and thanked him heaps. And, and then I just kicked in and went, right, let's get in. And yeah. started sprinting pretty much in. And then I started getting a niggle in my shoulder because I was sprinting. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> really idea. yeah. But anyway, I kept going. And then my only concern or I was through that period was when I went to stand up, my hemi locked yeah. on me and me having to crawl up. Crawl up the ramp. <laughs> the ramp. And, but, you know, I stood up. It was all good. I jogged up the ramp. And I was quite dazed, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Then um, I was just looking everywhere for my wife and yeah. the crew. And it's, it's quite a change, isn't it, from having the serenity of having your face down in the water for six hours to suddenly going up the ramp and then it's, again, thousands of people. Yeah. Whoa, a noise. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then there's a lady fussing around my ankle to get my yeah. my timing chip off. And, and then I spotted my wife and that and just, yeah, went to them and gave, them, gave my wife a huge cuddle. And yeah, she was a bit emotional. I got a little bit emotional and then just cuddled everyone else. And I was like, oh, wow, well, okay, so now I'm going to go and get my photo taken and, and get my medal yeah. and have a banana and a drink of water. And, and did that. And then my focus was to get out of my swimmers, get dry. Yeah. And hopefully check into our accommodation. Which they didn't let us until 2 o'clock. But um, to, get so obviously to get back and, yeah, get get cleaned and seen to. Yeah. You know? um, so that was a, a bit of a fuck. In hindsight, I probably should have just jumped on that table and got a massage because, like, if I didn't make it in that time, I was still going to – if I was still swimming, I was still swimming. Yeah. And I was still wet. Indeed. But, uh, yeah. And then, you know, that night we didn't – I went in for the presentation – uh, that was pretty cool. It was with um, John Hart and Alex the Giant, the, the huge guy. He did a really good time too, actually. Actually, it was one thing that resonated from my swim lesson with Paul Newsom was he said, I said to him, I don't kick and blah, 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 and he videoed me. And, and he said, in actual fact, you've got a really good two-beat kick. And he said, the yeah. only time that's going to be detrimental to you is if you're swimming to right next to a swell and a strong easterly. Yeah. He said, <laughs> your four-beat kickers will body surf all the way to right next. Yes. But you'll struggle. Yes. I'm like, oh, right. And, as it turned out, that was the conditions I copped. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Super. So a few beers the rest of the night? Uh, yeah, I had a few beers. Um, went back to the pub from the presentation. I had a feed and a few more beers. It was really busy there. Um, ended up just going back to our accommodation. I think I was in bed at 8.30. I was pretty pretty knackered. And um, <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning, our smoke alarm in our room went off. Brilliant. Um, yeah, perfect. And so, and I actually thought it was the whole house and I went around every room in the house, come back in and that's definitely only house. Took me about 10 minutes. I was right under the fan. I just stopped the fan with my hand and yeah. disabled it. Everyone else slept through it and had no idea about it. I was like, oh, the house could have burned down. How can you not wake up? Like there was. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway. So the original plan was then to double up and go to the um, Port Pub and do the 25K. Yes. Is that still on? No. <laughs> I pulled out of that. I took. Um, I thought I'd better get look after my health. Yeah, and get that sorted. Um, I had a swim today. It's my first swim back. You know, so that's one of two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks post. So, what's um, what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned out of this whole experience? Uh, the biggest lessons, I suppose. Uh, I think I may have trained a little too much. Um, maybe flogged myself out a little. Mm. I'll definitely do it again, 100%. And the, rottenness, and the rottenness channel swim again. Like, I know, I know, okay, I've got a time now. I've got a PB. Whether I beat it or I don't, well, obviously the idea is to beat it. Um, I don't like to. Um, I'll do it again next year. M maybe do a team. If my son and nephew don't want to do a team, I'll do a solo. Or the following year. Uh, either way, yeah. it's going to be within the next two years that I do it again. Um, but I'd like to do it yearly. I don't, yeah. But it is a big commitment, the training side of things. So it, it does consume you and it is full on. And I have to think about my my wife and, mm. and and family as well when committing to something like that. What else have you learned? And about yourself? Um, not to be, not to focus or care about, I suppose, 
what other people think or what they might think or what you think they might think. Um, just do it for yourself, for no one else, and um, and be happy no matter what. Like, you know, in the hindsight now, of and it's – as the time goes on, I get I'm feeling more and more accomplished. You know, it's like, and, yeah. and the enormity of the event and of, of doing it is um, it's still sinking in, and it's it's huge. You know, regardless of what I went through prior to it, it's it's massive. You know, to, more people bent over. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and uh, that stuck in my head. You mentioned to them, that to me a long time ago, and that's you know, more like you said, more people have climbed Mount Everest than people that, than people that have swum to Rot Nest. And I'm hanging to get my number plates now. I'm just so, <laughs> so pumped. And I got an email the other day. It's delayed because of the shark sighting. They don't know who was in that zone and who wasn't. So they're trying to figure yeah. that out before they um, designate numbers so you can order your plates. But yeah. um, You weren't affected, obviously, or knew anything no, about no, it. No, yeah. I'm shark according to my skipper, I was about the 18K mark or something when that happened. Lucky so you. yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, but I, and I obviously knew nothing about it until I hit the island too. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, and that's huge, and I'm really proud of myself. Yeah. You know? and, so here's a couple of questions for you: If you could go back and talk to Phil just right at the very start when you decided to start on this endeavour, what piece of advice would you give him? Don't be focused on numbers in both time to swim there and also kilometres per week. Listen to your body and just enjoy the ride. Yeah. Yeah. And do it for no one else. But Well, I mean, I always did. It was always for me anyway. It was always my bucket list item to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, just, just chill. Yeah. Don't be so. Don't stress. Stress less. I mean, that would be the same advice you give anybody else who's oh, thinking of doing it. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, well, maybe not in regard to the overtraining because everyone's so individual in that respect. You know? Yeah. And um, someone doing all that might not affect them like that. And who knows, it might not affect me next time either. I might be in a different state, mm. you know. But I probably still will do roughly 30Ks a week leading up. But I won't be pushing 40s on them. Um, which should free me up a little bit more for work and you know, home life. Yeah. But I'll be, yeah. Ocean swimming is definitely, like today was pretty cool. I was really excited yesterday thinking I'm going for a swim because I like swimming. Yes. For the fun of it. And yeah. I don't, it's not to, oh, my God, I need to do 9Ks or close to 10. I need to do this. Oh, okay, I'll go this, the groin to Dutchies and the groin and back and there. That's roughly 10. You know, like it wasn't. This, I wasn't thinking that. It wasn't figures. It wasn't anything else but a, a, a plot along and a swim. Yeah. And that was cool. Yeah. Super. I say, yeah, advice to other people too is hit the ocean as much as you can and, and in all conditions. You know, I swam in heaps worse than it was on that day. And, again, you just got to swim to the conditions, not not your all-day pace or your rhythm or your – you know, you just call cool pace, and yeah, stuff like that. yeah, that's right. Or even your ocean pace on a calm mm. day, you can't, you can't. The elements are there, and I didn't. That was one thing I didn't do was stress about the weather and the forecasts. I was like, well, there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. So, so why? If you constantly put that, look at it, if you put that time in the ocean in lots of different conditions, yeah, then you, 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 you back yourself. Yeah, I had the confidence in the conditions. You mm. know, I've swum in conditions that they probably would have cancelled the race. You know, and I'd done six, seven K swim in that, and I was like, well, "Yeah, there we go, bang." Doesn't yeah. matter what they, what, what's thrown on me in the day. Mm. So, I had that confidence going into it. I, the only thing I didn't have was, well, the the hospitalisation and that sort of thing took out my mental demon stress because mm. I wanted to do, I wanted to to race to swim in that suit, but in hindsight, I'm just, I'm not, I'm never, I'll never swim in a suit now. I'll swim in the pants. And mm. I'll, I'm selling my suit now. I've never swam in it. Try it on. That's it. So mm. I'm gonna, there you go. Check out eBay now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I chucked it on Gumtree last night. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I tried a suit on and there was a thing there about, oh, I want to swim bare chest and rock this. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there is something about that, yeah. I think, you know, with your, your chest out and down, face down, chest out, chest out, running across the line, you know, it's, um, 
I don't know whether it's a Neanderthal thing or it's a bloke thing or it's just pretty cool, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so, yeah, there you go. Mm. Phil, thank you very much for sharing your journey with us. No worries. It's, thank you uh, for documenting it. Yeah, mm. it'd be interesting seeing the three parts all come together and listen to yeah, it as well. It will. Um, thank you for sharing it. I hope that's inspired other people um, to give it a crack because it's mm. definitely worth it. Yeah, I'll just be, yeah. I'd like to thank my crew and team because. There's nothing solo about a solo crossing. Yeah. It's, um, without one cog in that wheel, you cannot make it or do it. You know, your paddlers, your skippers, your your wife, your no matter what part they are, your kids, no, no matter what, your friends, everything, your swimming mm. community. Without any part of that, it's um, it, it, it's not achievable. You know, and it's huge that people can help you out to achieve something like that. And they feel like a couple of said that they feel really humbled and honoured to be a part of that. You know that that we made it, we did it, and we were successful, and they feel it's nice that they feel that way. Yeah, and and then without them, I couldn't have done it. And it's so yeah. I'm so so appreciative and so grateful. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I I know exactly what you mean. I felt hugely overwhelmed and humbled after mm. I'd achieved mine. I remember that night, just thinking, Christ, none of this could have happened if it wasn't for these people helping me. Yeah, now you go and run a marathon, and it's just you and your trainers, and yeah. you can just. You know, you don't have to bother anybody else. No, that's right. this, you have to get a lot of people involved. Just the logistics and the organising and, yeah, mm. everything, you know. Mm. And, yeah, like, you, you can't do it on your own. Yeah, it's not a solo. It's not. No. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Phil, thank you very much. No worries. Cheers, thank mate. You. Cheers.